Good morning, everyone. Can we give Jesus the highest praise? Vocalize it. Come again. Give Jesus the highest praise. Let's shout it one more time. Give Jesus the highest praise. Hallelujah. Some of we have style and fashion with the hallelujah. We put our twist on it. But can we lift our hands and personalize the praise? Personalize our relationship. Just focus on it and thank God for his redemption. Thank God for his mercy. Can we thank God for his mercy? Can we thank God for his mercy? That's very important this morning. We're asking God to remember us in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, we pray you scatter the enemy and confuse the devil. Let the enemy be bewildered and dumbfounded as we release the fire of God to burn every devil, to confuse every devil, every plan of the enemy. May the fire of God strike you. May the power of God strike you. May the sword of God be pulled against you. And may your power demolish. May your power be consumed. Lord, we thank you that the spirit of confusion will not be here. The spirit of religion will not be here. But we thank you, God, that your Holy Spirit will be here. Lift your hands high. We ask that your Holy Spirit will be here. And make it be obvious that your Holy Spirit is here. We give you praise, God, that you will arrest this atmosphere and let your fire hover over us, that we will be fully aware that you are here and that we will remember you, be cognizant of you, and remember your mercy. We lift our hands and we ask you for mercy. Lord, let your mercy prevail in Jesus' mighty name. We give you thanks and we give you glory. Lift your hands and shout, hallelujah. hallelujah. Please turn your Bibles with me to Matthew chapter 26. Matthew chapter 26. And when you have found it, please say amen. We want to read from verse 36. Matthew 26, verse 36 to about 42. Thank you, Jesus, for your mercy. And I'm reading from the modern King James Version of the Bible. The modern King James Version of the Bible. And the title for this passage is The Prayer in the Garden. This was the very close to the end of Jesus. Jesus' life on earth. And there was an event that took place in this garden. We'll also be reading this morning from... 1 Samuel chapter 12 and verse 23. We ask the musician to help and begin to set the atmosphere for the word. We'll be looking at Matthew 26 and then 1 Samuel chapter 12. One verse over in Samuel. Let's read together. I'm reading this morning from the New King James Version. Matthew 26, 36 to 42. The prayer in the garden. It says... Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane and said to the disciples, sit here while I go and pray over there. He said to the disciples, sit here. We're in the garden. Sit here while I go over there and pray. I want everybody to say pray. I want everybody to say take the time to pray. And, and if you look here, we are, by doing that, we are following a very powerful example of the Messiah. Now, verse 37, he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and he began to be sorrowful and deeply distressed. Then he said to them, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. Stay here and watch with me. Somebody say, stay here and watch with me. So it was, it was as if something heavy came up on Jesus. And he said, even unto death. 
Perhaps he meant that sorrow overtake him to the point where he feel like he might pass. Where he feel like his life was about to end. So he decided to pray. An urgency took him and he decided to pray. He said, stay here and watch with me. Verse 39. And he went a little further from where they were. And he fell on his face and he prayed saying, oh my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Jesus said, Lord, if it's possible, take away this feeling. But nevertheless, nevertheless, not my will, let your will be done. Verse 40. And they came, then he came rather to the disciples and found them sleeping. Somebody say sleeping. And said to Peter, what? Please notice the exclamation. What? Jesus was adamant. What? Could you not watch and pray with me for one hour? Watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. Let's read that again. Watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. Then he said, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And we know that's a fact. Final verse in this passage. Again, a second time, he went away and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if this cup cannot pass away from me, Unless I drink it, then let your will be done. We see here a situation where Jesus, being prophetic in nature, knows that his ministry has come to an end on earth. He has fulfilled, fulfilled his purpose on the earth. Are you with me? And he began, this is the moment uh, shortly after uh, he started to even sweat blood Ricardo. Because the pr people would say the pressure of the world came down on him. The sins of all mankind. Those that lived before him, lived with him and lived after him. Everything was coming to way up on him. The Messiah was taking on the sins of the world. If you remember the scapegoat in Israel, they would lay hands on the goat and transfer sin to the goat. God, that scapegoat was a picture of Jesus. At this time, it would have been that he was there to take on everything and a deep sorrow came on him. Can you imagine what is happening here? I see somebody shake them head. Can you imagine why he must have gotten very sorrowful and a sorrow came up on him and he started possibly to cry. And he said, let me pray. And he brought disciples with him, specifically three he took directly with him. And he said, watch with me. Meaning, come, pray with me. Because I don't know which of you would see your, your loved one in distress. And they start praying in the room with you. And in five minutes, you drop asleep, leave them. It would really indicate to them that you're not with them. So Jesus began to pray and pray and pray, Lord, if this is if, if it's your will, I will go through it. He, he was even discombobulated. He was sort of confused because he knows that his purpose is to die. He knows that in, a, in, in short procession, he would go to the cross. Right? This was a mere hours before being arrested. And he said, nevertheless, if it is your will, Lord, let it be done. He began to feel the weight of the world. Can you not stay with me for one hour? I wake up and I pray. You're, I'm praying and I look and I find you sleeping. I wake you up and you sleep again. Could you not watch with me for one hour? Perhaps any of us would have been upset. If we brought a support team and that team failed us. And Jesus said, what? You can't believe this. I'm here praying my life away. But you think that it is safety. You think it's peace. But before you know it, there is going to be sudden destruction. Uh, let me read for you 1 Samuel chapter 12. And you can make a note of it. 1 Samuel chapter 12 verse 23. 1 Samuel chapter 12 verse 23. Samuel the prophet responds to the people and says, Moreover, as for me, somebody say, as for me. He said, it should be far from me. I don't want this. Make it be far away from me. That I should sin before God by ceasing to pray for you. 
But instead of stopping to pray, I will teach you the good and the right way. Lift your hand and say, Lord, teach me the good and the right way. Hallelujah. Today I want to speak to you about the real pandemic that we are facing. Not the coronavirus or the COVID-19 or the SARS-2 or the Delta. Whatever you, whichever name you want to give it. The, the, the physical pandemic that is on this earth. We're not talking about that. We're talking about the real pandemic. And I've been wanting to touch this topic with that mindset from 2020. But I haven't. The real pandemic that we face is a spiritual pandemic. Can I get some strings? It's a spiritual pandemic. Lift your hand and say, thank you, Jesus. And the spiritual pandemic I'm talking about is prayerlessness. It's the pandemic of prayerlessness. Now, prayerlessness is technically not an English word. It's a word that we Christians make up for the lack of prayer in someone's life. It's not an official word, but it has been used enough that you will find it on the internet. You, it probably will be um, inducted into the dictionary soon, because that tends to happen, as you know, every year there are new words. But I want you to say prayerlessness. Say it again, prayerlessness. This is the real pandemic that we are facing, a spiritual pandemic. And it is not for the unbeliever, but it is for the believers. It is a spiritual disease that is affecting believers, maybe now more than ever. Maybe now more than ever. Now, if you understand prayer, and we have been praying and putting emphasis on prayer, and we have been hoping that people will catch on to it, because one of the things that I really believe God called this church to have a culture of prayer, not leaders alone in prayer, but a culture of prayer, and I would always envision it over the years. I have not envisioned that thing for several years. We have been here a long time, and prior to the long time, I used to imagine it for a long time, and then for a long time, I haven't imagined it. And I've been wondering if I have given up on it, because it is something that you cannot necessarily shove down people's throat. No, I guarantee you, if I teach you religious prayer, it will catch on very quickly. But when I teach you prayer... Some persons be feel a burden to pray. Some persons feel like they cannot pray. Some persons try to match up with me, our minister Louis, our pastor Jason, our prophet Craig, and say, well, I can't pray like them. So I will just let them pray for me. And you push yourself further into prayerlessness, not knowing that well, you should never do that. You should more pattern you should more pattern. If we read the life of Jesus, we see that he was a man of prayer. He would get up and go in the morning, go up into the, the mountain. He would go out on the water and he would pray because he was in ministry and his purpose depended on prayer. And if we have any pattern of prayer, it shouldn't be a pastor really. It should be the Jesus that you read about in the Bible. But if you're not reading about Jesus, you don't recognize that there is a void in your life there is emptiness and, a, and a, a dead zone in your spiritual life because perhaps you are suffering from the pandemic of prayerlessness are you here you here and you're following the, the prayer for the christian is your life blood the, the prayer is the life blood of the christian it helps you with your walk with God. The Bible says in uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.17, we should pray continually. In say, prayer without ceasing. Meaning that you should always find the time to pray. We need to be in constant communion with God. We need to be connected to God. Not many of us are like that. You know why we need to be connected to God? Because as human beings, we are not self-sustaining. And I thank you for whoever clapped on that because self-sustaining, we think that we are. In our pride, we think we can take care of ourselves. We really can't. Because there are many things that no matter how you beard and groom and dress up and eat healthy, there are things that can reach you that is outside of your hand. You are not self-sustaining in the least. The earth is not, does not sustain itself. 
It is sustained by the voice of God, the command of God, which is also by the power of God. Without these things, um, there will be chaos in the world. Imagine how it is now. Imagine if these things were not there. We are not sustaining self. We don't self-sustain. We need God. Lift your hand and say, I need God. Lift your hands and say, I need God. I need God to make a way for me. He is the way maker. He is the miracle worker. God make a way where there seems to be no way. We are not self-sustaining. And, and anything that interrupts your connection with God leads you to self-reliance. Let me, 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 I want, when I stop, I really want you to think about the last sentence. Anytime you, you, you reach a stage where your connection with God is just interrupted, it is just dead. Really and truly what you are saying is that I reach self-reliance. You might not say it vocally, but you give it, do you know body language and there's a sign language in the spirit that you're saying to God, well, I don't need you. Because why? Prayerlessness is really a choice. You can say, I'm struggling with prayerlessness. But it is a choice. Because when God wakes you, you go back to sleep. Anybody here? So you are choosing to be prayerless. Because there are a number of things you can do to pray. You can force yourself. What we tend to do is blame somebody else. Like maybe pastor. For our bad state in the spirit. But the Bible says, work out your salvation with fear. And we're trembling. So prayerlessness is something that it, it sends a signal in the realm of the spirit that I am self-sustaining. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? It sends a signal that I don't need God. Whether you like it or not, it is saying that. Because if you have not prayed for six weeks and you're a Christian, that relationship is in trouble. Lift your hand and say, Lord, forgive me. Self-reliance has devastatingly dangerous consequences as a Christian. Because the mere fact that you got saved was because you know that you need God. Are you praying before the decisions that you make as the Lord interject? Or are you just entering into business with this person? Lending money to that person? Buying this Buying that, going a, on a date with this person. When you, 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 you know God, if you really pray, God will tell you, no. Lift your hand to Jesus. Are you praying before every decision? I mean, are you even praying about what route to take when you're, when you're transporting? I mean, some people might say that's deep, but there are people that pray which avenue me for walk upon. I don't reach that level. But are you praying about the decisions that you are making are you incorporating god and asking him to open doors for you or are you trying to open them for yourself are you really saying to god i can sustain myself now jesus our savior our creator some of you don't even know that jesus is the creator and and and, and remember i'm talking to other people as well there are christians that do not know and our creator, Jesus Christ, he literally calls us to prayer. I think prayer is harder than reading the word. I believe so. Jesus calls us to prayer. Let me show you. Unquestionably, with clarity, he says, pray always. Luke 18 verse 1. He says, pray persistently. Luke 11 8. In Matthew 9, 38, he said, pray for ministry because the harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. He literally calls you to pray. You need to ask the question, today, do I pray enough? Are you hearing me? You need to ask yourself the question, do I actually persevere with my prayer requests? Or do I give up one week in? When I don't see it happening quickly, do I stop praying or do I have perseverance like what Luke 11, 8 said? Persist, persist. You must constantly knock. 
you must go before the king and gnaw him if you have to. Or are you giving up? Or do you need to ask yourself the question, am I praying enough? Lift your hand to Jesus. Ask yourself, am I living a life that seeks God? Do I live what it means to seek the Lord? When I read Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, that says, First, seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all things shall be added unto you after you seek God first. A person who is prayerful is a seeker of God. And he said, don't get it wrong. Don't get it twisted. He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Diligently seek him. Most rewards don't come if you don't sweat for it. And that's one of the things we don't understand about God. Because we take God for our boobs. God answers every prayer. Whether yes, wait, or no. And sometimes, wait is the one that comes the most. Because the more you pray about something, is the better you are to handle it when it comes. Because you can pray about something and get it quickly and run off with it and show off with it and waste it and squander it. Because it, it oh my God answer my prayer so quick and before you know it, you squander that resource, that blessing that God gave you. So wait, you, you will hear wait more times than, than ever. No, I don't believe you have to wait long if you are continually preparing yourself and persevering. You have things like the prayer of faith where you can pray about something one time and it is settled in your spirit and you don't pray about it again because God gives you the reassurance that he, he has done it. But are you seeking him first? Talking about the spiritual pandemic prayerlessness. I have to make a case for you. We have five things to go through today. Let's do the first one. Um, and I shouldn't say five. It's, we have four things. But we have five sections. But the first section will lead you into the four. So this section today, uh, I want to make a case for prayerlessness being a sin. Because many Christians do not believe that when you are not praying, you are in sin. You believe that lie is a sin, thief is a sin, fornication is a sin. But you don't necessarily believe that if I am prayerless, that then I am living in sin. And perhaps if I die, because you have lived in sin, you might end up H-E double hockey stick. Here it is. Because you'll be living it if you don't pray for six months and die. I'm not sure. Because six months is a lifestyle. Three weeks is a habit. Did you know that? Anything you do for three weeks becomes a habit. That's why you can try praying for three weeks. You will never stop. And anything that passed six months that you constantly do becomes your lifestyle. So anything that is weighing you now down, you're going to have to stop doing that thing for six months to break that lifestyle and to break that thing. You can break a habit easy, but lifestyle. So if you, are, if you have not been praying for six months, psychologically, you are now in the lifestyle of prayerlessness. And is prayerlessness... A sin. Let me ask the question. Is it sin to not actively or regularly pray? I don't want nobody to answer yet. When Samuel, we read 1 Samuel chapter 12, 23 earlier. When Samuel confronted the people. Are you hearing me? He confronted them and he made it plain that he was not with them. Because they didn't want God. They wanted a king. They didn't want God. They wanted an earthly king. They said, look at the nations. They have a king. We want a king. And it, it burned Samuel and it hurt God. The Bible says so. Because they say, in fact, God consoled Samuel and said, Samuel, they never reject you and me, they reject. Samuel don't feel too bad because they rejected me. And the people wanted a king. And Samuel, in response to them, he sat in the office of the prophet. He was in prophetic ministry. And as a minister, a leader of God's people, he said, Moreover, as for me, 
far it may, let it be far from me that I should stop praying for you. But instead, I will teach you to do the right and the good thing. Eh? Him say, may it be far from me that I should sin to not pray for you. So according to Samuel, hold on, prayerlessness is a sin. But you see, he was a prophet. It is expected of him to pray. He was a, a, a leader of men. Clearly, if him not in prayer and in that position, it would be considered sin. But what about the regular Joe? Listen. If you are prayerless, is it a sin for you? Fine. Prophet Samuel, don't pray. Him say it's sin. But what about the average man, the average Joe, or the average Jennifer? Is it okay if I haven't prayed for a long time? If I go every week and make pastor pray for me? For some of us, our church experience. Nowadays is about somebody praying for us. Is about someone ministering to us in prayer. Because we have no personal prayer life of our own. And we realize that we need God. So we go to church for the little prayer. Do you come to church for to be prayed for? Many Christians are stuck right there. Because no personal prayer life. So his response to the people, Samuel's response to the people, it has to be compelling for us today. Because as a leader, his responsibility was to shepherd the people by praying for them. If anything happened to them, they went to Samuel. Can you utter a word of prayer for me? But are they also praying for themselves while asking the man of God to pray for them? And if two shall agree touching anything, do you use the equations that you see in scripture? Huh? Or do you just, your experiences make somebody pray for me? Because we are easily to admit that our prayer life is weak. We are easily to admit that our prayer life is ineffective. But we are not easy to admit that we have been sinning. By not praying. So is prayerlessness for the average person a sin? It is not listed in the Bible as sin. You can't find the Bible say, if you don't pray, then you sin. You don't see it listed out. You don't. Like, like, like gambling. Is gambling a sin? The Bible never says so. How much time I want to go to Caymanals and try my luck? But you see, when you try your luck, the sin death so because you get caught up in it. And it becomes your and the Bible warn you about that. That is a sin, the lifestyle. No, don't go and gamble because of me. It's like drinking. Is having a drink a sin? The Bible does not say that. It says drunkenness is a sin. But the Bible don't say that prayerlessness is a sin. It don't outright say it. So many of us go through the motion because there is a gray area that maybe was purposely left by God. However, James, the brother of Jesus, many people again don't know these simple things. Jesus' brother who grew up, Mary, Mary Pitney, Mary and Joseph Child, bloodline of King David, but not Messiah. James said, Anyone who knows to do good, anyone who knows the good that he ought to do and does not do it, commits a sin. So hold on, hold on. That means, say, if I don't tell somebody about Jesus, I, I am sinning. If I don't fast and pray, I am sinning because these things are good. If I don't love my neighbor, I am sinning. Anybody who knows to do good and doesn't do it, commit a sin. That means sin has to do with morality. Anything that is just not right. You can't pinpoint every sin. But there are principles. For instance, the Bible doesn't talk about abortion. But you're going to say, but it talks about murder. Hold on, man. That's why you believe when a policeman kills a man in the line of duty or when a soldier kills a man in the line of duty, you think it's murder. That's not murder. The law has to make it murder. But, so people argue and say abortion is not sin. 
Because the Bible never says, but you know the principles of God. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. Lack of doing good by praying for people. Lack of doing good by praying for someone. Lack of doing good by prayer is a sin. If you decide you're not going to do anything and you're not praying. And, and the good that prayer can do in your life. The good that prayer can do in the life of others. The good that prayer can do in the nation. If you choose not to do it, then you are in sin. So what then? We're trying to make a case. Is prayerlessness sin? We are clearly commanded to pray. Because the Bible says, Jesus told his disciples, pray and do not give up. Jesus said, don't give up. Pray and don't give up when you're praying. Jesus commanded, when you pray, don't stop. If you give up, are you breaking a command? Talk to me. I see one person. Yeah? Paul, Paul the apostle commanded he said pray without ceasing pray continually 1 Thessalonians 5 17 when Peter write his letter Peter said in order you need to be self controlled so that you can find yourself mindful to go pray that's what Peter said be self controlled in 1 Peter 4 verse 7 be self controlled so you can pray Lift your hand and say, Lord, teach me to pray. When the disciples saw the life of Jesus and the miracles and how the crowd responded, the influence he had, that even, he, he, even demons cried out. They went to him and said, Lord, teach me how to pray. Because they recognized that prayer is the essential element for the Christian. James... The brother of Jesus, Apostle James, he commanded us in James chapter 5. He said, pray for one another. And he said, if you pray for one another, after we talk about the problem and we pray for the one another, he said, that is the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man that I feel much. Deliverance ministry is about prayer. Jesus said, when you pray, Ask God to deliver you from the evil one. <laughs> Lift your hand and say, thank you, Jesus. We're trying to make a case. Listen, I believe if failing to do something that we are commanded to do, if we fail, I believe it is a sin. Can we break a commandment? Do you agree? So that means then that prayerlessness is a major sin in the life of people. That means prayerlessness is a major sin that we face. Because we are not following the command to pray. Is there anybody in here that I'm talking to or about? You're not going to fornicate, but you, but you don't pray. You're not going to lie, but you don't pray. You're not going to gossip, but you don't pray. You're just as bad. And you can live a life of prayerlessness and end up where the homosexual is, where the thief is, where the murderer is. Because sin is sin and there's a consequence for sin. We're trying to make a case if prayerlessness for the average Joe is sin. Are you here? Are you sure? If failing to do what we are commanded to do. Listen, lift your hand. We all need to repent. I say we all need to repent. No, listen. Some of you might say you pray. But do you pray enough? That's a question you can ask. I know some of you are, are prayerful. That's okay. That's a small percentage. Let me be real. Of the body of Christ. Are prayerful Christians. There are some people that pray if them buck them too. Come on, come on, church. Come on, church. It's not an easy topic. God wants, I was going to do something else, and the Lord shifts me up um, Saturday morning. Because what I'm going to talk to you about over the next few months, if we're not in prayer, we just, we, we just, it doesn't make sense. If we're so caught up with the world that we can talk about work with the co worker, if we can 
talk about the TV show. If we can make time to go on this life and that life, we can make time to do everything except to make time with God. We are in big, big, big trouble. And I'm putting an emphasis on prayer because the man that cannot read needs to be able to pray. Uh, so just in case you can't read, you will find that prayer is a little bit higher than, than reading the Bible. Because some will say, well, I read the Bible. But you're not, you see, reading the Bible gives you the, 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 the logos. But prayer gives you the rhema. And some of you, if you don't know, rhema means the spoken word coming from the mouth of God when Jesus said man shall not live by bread alone but by every word he meant the, the, the rhema word not the written word logos is the written word that's why the ship that sell the books call themselves logos because it's full of the written word but are you full of written word I have no rhema word and you can read the bible and don't hear the voice of God as well as you can. But I believe if you are prayerful, you tend to hear the voice of God more. How do I know? You have a vast set of Christians who don't believe in revelatory gifts, but they read the Bible every day and they can never say God talk to them. Because of how them shut off themselves. Lift your hand and say, Lord, I repent. We need to repent of prayerlessness. Come, say, Lord, I repent. I haven't been praying, God, so I'm sorry. Are you here? John Bunyan, an old teacher of the Bible, a Puritan teacher, a man who was an author, he wrote a quote, and the quote said, Prayer will make a man cease from sin. Prayer will stop you from sin. But sin will entice you to stop praying. And, and if you don't understand, prayer can stop you from fornicating. But fornicating will stop you from praying. So prayer is important for the Christian, for the Christian, for you and I. The prayerlessness is identical identical to backsliding so if you have not been praying you are backsliding you will say oh pray for me because sin this sin of me away this thing is defeating me this problem I get to me it will defeat me it will drive me mad maybe because you are not in prayer why you have no victory because if you were in prayer, many of the problems you would be easy to you would you would find it easy to defeat them. I don't know if you're here. Don't know if you're here. Can you imagine if you had a best friend? We always read this when we talk about prayerlessness. You have a best friend and you just cut them off for years or months that relationship might never be able to recover because a friend will have you off and say then i want me to do so and you say god is your friend and you're not talking to him or when he might call you into prayer you see it like work you see it as hard so you're, you're just lazy and you don't want to pray him wake you up and you don't want to pray. Do you know that what happened with Adam and Eve? It can be likened to prayerlessness. Because they were in the garden. And the actions of Adam and Eve in the garden. It was a type of prayerlessness. Because when they committed sin. They were afraid to talk to God. They, 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 when they ate the fruit. And get the, the, the knowledge of good and evil. They were afraid them hide themselves from God prayerlessness and that's what happens to us sometimes when we get caught up in certain things and we, and we commit a sin we just stop pray and we don't realize that the guilt that we feel is not conviction because guilt will make you stop praying but the conviction will cause you to go deep in prayer if you are truly sorry about what you do you will pray because only God can forgive you I don't know if you're here. Lift your hand. 
prayerlessness is antithetical to a relationship with God. It is the antithesis. Prayer, let me give you easy. Prayerlessness is the villain in your story. And Jesus is your hero. And the prayerlessness is the one that is going to stop you from receiving salvation. If you're a Christian and you're not praying, you are not a Christian. But you thought you were a Christian. Because I said to you, if you're a Christian and you're not praying, and you sat there and said, well, I'm a Christian and I'm not praying. Maybe you're not a Christian a long time and you don't realize because it is identical to backsliding. Why are so many of us taking deep breaths? Why are so many of us signing and one person yawning? Am I helping anybody? So I shake them head. And the one them one know them a pray. So them yeah. Easy. Anybody can anything can reach any away. All if you are prayer warrior right now, you can encounter something that will shut you down because you are not we are not self-sustaining. Lift your hand and say, Lord, teach me to pray. Psalm 5 verse 3. In the morning, Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I lay my request before you. And I wait expectantly. Psalm 145 verse 18. The Lord is near to all who call on him. To all who call on him in sincerity. Lift your hand to Jesus. Listen church. Prayerlessness is a sin and there are four dangerous consequences that occur in your spiritual life when you are prayerless when you are prayerless there are four dangerous things that happen number one and they all have to do with sin and the type of sin that prayerlessness is number one when you do not pray you sin against god every sin is against god clearly he, it wouldn't be sin if it wasn't a sin. You wouldn't be able to call it sin if it wasn't against God. Because once it's something against his law, it is a sin. But when you pray, let's make it very pinpoint. When you don't pray, it's a sin against God. Why? Lift your hand to Jesus. Oh, I feel the glory of God. I just want you to feel it as well. Lift your hand to Jesus. Why? Ooh. Because it offends God. When you're not in prayer, it offends God. Why it offends Him? Because you are hindering His purpose. God is sovereign. Meaning... That he chooses to do things how he chooses to do it. And he chooses to do some things only by prayer. God will see somebody who needs help. But because of how he said things, he will do nothing unless somebody prays. You can't argue with him because he is sovereign. He chose it that way. When you refuse to pray, you are preventing him from accomplishing mighty works. Don't know if you're hearing me. It's like if you're not witnessing. If we shut off all preaching. If we shut off all communication and all witnessing of Jesus. How can people get saved? How can people get saved? But yet still God wants everybody to be saved. But he needs us to manifest it. Why? That's how he chose. Because he is God. When you don't pray, you are offending him. Because you are blocking him from doing great things in the earth. From doing great things in your life. Some things only can happen through prayer. Some oil is only released through prayer if you don't pray there are some things that will never happen for you 
And then sometimes you sit there and wonder why God not touching you. Why you can't grow. Why you have made no effort and you want to blame somebody else. We need to repent because sin, the prayerlessness is a sin against God. Are you here? It signals to God that I can take care of myself. I don't need you in my life, God. Because I have not acknowledged you, but I acknowledge my boyfriend. I acknowledge my girlfriend, my mother, my father. I acknowledge my boss when he's peeing off a signal and say, Lord, come by here. Lord, I need your help. When last have you been at home and you have literally said, Lord, and it is me standing in the need. Not for somebody to pray for me, but to pray for myself. Lord, I need you. Come on, lift your hand to Jesus. Prayer brings you to the closeness to God. And this closeness that you find with God, it reveals the mysteries of God. You can't get intimate with God if you don't pray. Are you willfully de denying God of his fellowship with you? The thing that he loves the most, are you willfully blocking God? from fellowship with you from spending time with you think about it james chapter 4 verse 8 draw close to god and he will draw near to you cleanse your hands you sinners and purify your hearts you double-minded some of you don't know that prayer changes your heart prayer cleanses your heart you're a christian with a bad heart i know you're not praying I know you're not praying. How are you going to fight this sin against God? One thing, you have to maybe set regular times a day to pray and stick to it. Have some discipline. Find your time during the day and say, this is my prayer time. You have to stop sinning against God. How can you fight it? Make an effort. Do something. Look here. Praying for five minutes is better than not praying. Praying for 15 minutes is better than not praying. I have had times in my life when I have not prayed for, for, for over a month because I only want to pray for one hour or more. I didn't know how bad it was that if I, if I, if I, if I went pray for 15 minutes, I just don't do it. Because that's how I was thinking. But it's better I had prayed the 15 minutes. Than to be prayerless for one month. No, I'm not advocating praying for 15 minutes. Because 15 minutes is just praise and worship. To really start praying. But. Draw close to me. And I will draw near to you. Lift your hand and say thank you Jesus. How can you fight it? Set time to pray. Do, number two. Don't be formal about prayer. Not number two. As in the second way to fight, number one. Don't be formal about prayer. We're too religious. That's why we don't pray often enough. We're too formal. We don't go to him like a friend. We don't go to him like a brother. So we have to go there and we have to go on with one bag of sitting before we can talk to him. Because somebody taught us, you have to do this first. You have to do that. You have to repent. You have to scan yourself. If you did sin... Because I'm not going to hear you. Well, if that was true, all when you're done, scan and talk, him shouldn't hear you anyway. I don't know. Some of you get it. Listen to what I'm saying. Don't make it too formal or you will pray less. Make it casual about you and your daddy. It gets easier to pray. Cultivate the habit. Just talk to God throughout the day. Lift your hand and say, Lord, I repent. Of sinning against you. Number two, the second consequence, I feel God. When you do not pray, you sin against God's people. It's a sin against God, and it's also a sin against people. This is a big sin because many sins are against God only, some sins are against yourself only. But prayerlessness. Is a sin all, it's the mother of sin. Number two, 
The next consequence. When you do not pray, you sin against God's people. Prayer is an active way to show somebody you love them. There are people that will give. There are false prophets that give to charity. And the whole world draw to them and say them so kind. But these men have never prayed for you. They pray upon you. P-R-E-Y. Eh? The praying wolves. P-R-E-Y. Them see you as a victim to pray upon. Like a lion prays. These men will give you food and give you money and charity. But they will never pray. So I believe it is when you pray for people. It's a higher form of love. I get one and two answer. Prayerlessness is defiance to God. It is defiant to the command when God said, pray for others. You're not praying, you can't be praying for people then. Some of you, when you even pray, you just pray about yourself. That is still prayerlessness. Because prayer is multifaceted. There are many tenants to prayer. There are many avenues. Pray with all kinds of prayer, the Bible says. Lift your hand and say, Jesus. Listen, we are called to pray for people, even the difficult people. You're called to pray for them. The only people I don't pray for is unrepentant people. And that's not what I want. I'm not enforcing that on you. I will pray against a witch and ask God to melt them. You might say, Lord, forgive them. That's up to you. Because unrepentant, I don't waste time, but that's just me. Maybe it's my position. I don't know. But pray for difficult people. Even the people that persecute you, pray for them because most times they, they, they're not unrepentant, they're just wrong and they would persecute you. And the Bible actually says in Matthew 5 44, pray for them that persecute you. You're not praying for them, you're doing them an injustice. Somebody stand up against you, ask God to change their mind, ask God to convict them. Sometimes you say, God. Shut down them plans. That's fine. But don't ask God to shut them down. Because that means sickness, disease, death. So pray for them. And shut down their plans. Because the plans of people release demons. So you can counter a witchcraft. But we don't rest against flesh and blood. So the person is not really your enemy most times. Unless they're unrepentant, where they're given over to become an agent of Satan. That's different. Please understand. Pray for the people who persecute you at work. The person who send witchcraft on you every month. Pray for them. Ask God to show them fear. The fear of God. That's praying for them. Stop them in them tracks, Lord. And show them who you are. Make them see you like how you, like how Apostle Paul saw you when he was persecuting the church and he had to shut him down in the middle of the road, stop him in him tracks rather. And send Ananias to go pray for him. When Ananias reached Paul, the persecutor, Saul at the time, who became apostle, when Ananias reached to him, Ananias said, I have come because God sent me to pray for you. So you can receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And, 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 and Ananias must have been afraid. Are we uncomfortable? Must have been so afraid because Paul was a murderer. God, I really him. You have sent me for God pray for. And he went and prayed for him and he received his sight. Lift your hand and say, pray for them. Think of five people right now that you need to pray for. The, the, the difficult ones. The ones that persecute you. Timothy said in 1 Timothy 2.1 I urge you with all petition, with all prayers and intercession and all thanksgiving make these things be offered for the, all people. Pray for everybody. Even the prime minister. Pray for him. <clears throat> Having a hard time today. Are you with me? When you are prayerless, you are ignoring the gift of intercession. Are you hearing me? 
If you're not praying, you are ignoring the gift that God gives mankind. That gift is intercession, where you can stand up in the gap for somebody. So when you're not praying for people, you are committing sin against them. Are you, are, are you in agreement? If you're not praying for somebody, you are committing a sin against them. Show them your face in such a way that it helped them. You see somebody going for the wrong, say, Lord, if they are going to fall, make them fall in such a way that they will see you. I don't know because some people are headstrong, but pray for them. Be strategic in your prayer. If you see them, I'm going to feel. Say, God, make them understand themselves. Allow this failure to wake them up. Because sometimes we pray, Lord, now make them feel. But some people, pe we can't pray against people willing. You, know? you have to look where they are going and pray accordingly. Are you, when you don't pray, you are ignoring this powerful gift called intercession. Lift your hand and say, thank you, Jesus. I don't know any better way to show somebody you love them than to take them to the Lord in prayer. This is why God rewards you when you pray in secret. You're not hearing me, you know? You don't need to be seen. No one needs to know you are praying for them. You can be at home and God bring up Sister Sonia. And you prevent her from an attack of the enemy because you stand in the gap. God is looking for people who will stand up in the gap. He's looking everywhere. Ezekiel 22 verse 30. I sought for a man to stand in the gap. A man who would make a wall to stand up between me and my judgment for the land. May I look for somebody, God said, and I couldn't find anybody. In Ezekiel 22 tells you, if God had found an intercessor, he would not have judged Israel. And there are judgments brewing over people, brewing over nations, that your prayer can reverse. That is how Abraham... Moses also was able to Bible said change the mind of God because they prayed for people. You're not here. You sure? Do you want to be anointed? Let me give you the secret to the supernatural anointing. Start praying for people and don't pray for yourself. For a season. Because God is looking for somebody to dash out on. The moment you begin to pray for people regularly, anointing of spirit and power, miraculous, miraculous power will fall on you. Because it is your words that God channels to bring breakthrough to them. You want the supernatural anointing? Start praying for other people. This modern Christianity teaches you to pray for yourself. You, I, you cannot get anointed to pray for yourself. I stand up on that. You know why? Because that is service to nobody. And the anointing is for service. Understand it if you want. If you want to hack the anointing, which you can do, because you can take somebody's mantle who is wasting time. Say it again. Say, oh yes. You can walk in favor that was not originally meant for you, but somebody has neglected it. How, how do I know? Go read Esau and his brother's story. He never interested in birthright, and it passed to the bad mind one. You're not, you don't understand spiritual things I'm trying to show you. You want the anointing? Start praying for people. And when I say anointing, I'm talking about the power and might. 
That when you pray, the, the atmosphere responds and the atmosphere shakes. And when you pray, oil is released. Because you're praying for somebody and God just wants somebody to speak on behalf of the people, to speak on behalf of the nation. Start praying. Lift your hand. Start praying for God to deliver and to heal people. And oil will just invade your life. Through godly intercession. Listen. Through godly intercession. Listen. God provides when you pray for people. God heals bodies. He heals families. People get saved when you pray. Churches experience revival when people pray for others. Lord, I am asking you that you move in this place and you heal bodies and mass. Revival overtakes. Because you're putting other people in front of you. I say oil will invade your life if you begin to pray for people. It's the quickest way to get anointed. Some of you are fasting because you want power to go show off. I am anointed. The blood of Jesus against that millennial mindset. Where is this you, you, you? The blood of Jesus against this selfie culture. Jesus said, what you do in secret, I will reward you publicly. Come. Looking at four things. This is number two. I will end now. How do you stop sinning against people? through prayerlessness go home today write a list of 15 people that you're going to pray for so you can break this sin find 15 people please may i beg you and write down them name make five of them somebody who you can't turn who you cannot stand at least and start pray for them for the next two weeks and look how oh God I go come true for you. I don't know if you get it. Lift your hand. Number three. The third consequence. When you are prayerless, you sin against yourself. That's why I said this sin dangerous. Do you know the only other sin? That you sin against yourself with is fornication because you sin against your body and God. But prayerlessness, you sin against God, you sin against man, and you sin against yourself. And there's another thing I will tell you. Number three, you when you don't pray, you sin against yourself. Let me tell you what I'm talking about. Prayer makes room in the heart of the prayer. The, it makes room in the heart of the person who is praying to hear God's correcting voice. If God has never corrected you, it's because you are prayerless. When you are in prayer, it is beneficial to you because God will talk to you about your ways. And I've taught you, prayer is like a mirror. You really start to see yourself when you start pray right and see who you are and start repent for your bad ways that we all have. How can you be a Christian and be full of pride? You're not praying because the proud cannot pray. Proud don't pray. Them call themselves God. I will become like the most high. Him stop praying to God. He want to be God. When you're proud, you're not praying. Because a person who prays know that they're not self-sustaining. 
So a proud Christian is not a reality. And if you struggle with pride, you need to pray more. God will cut that thing out. So when you're not praying, you're sinning against yourself. Because the Christian who does not pray regular, you will have heart failure. Your heart will fail you. By heart, I mean your soul. You're not pray. Your soul will fail you. What do I mean? What do I mean? Because if you're not praying, the carnal mind is still ruling you. Lift your hand. If you're not praying, the carnal mind is ruling you. If you're not praying, you are a candidate for the reprobate mind. Lord, release a wall of fire against the enemy and against confusion. Let Satan be confused in the name of Jesus and bewildered. Listen, when you're not praying, your heart is going to be bad. You'll remain with a bad heart because you're not praying. You can't hear God. You can't, God can't, you can't allow God to correct you. So the bad heart syndrome become your story. You, you are a candidate for a bad heart, a stony heart, a heart of sin, a reprobate mind, a carnal mind. If you're not praying, you're going to love sin. One person there. I'm trying to show you that if you're not praying for your, if you're not praying, you're doing an injustice to yourself. Matthew 26, 41. Watch and pray so you don't enter into temptation. When you're preoccupied with the things of the world instead of the things of God, you're, you're just not praying. I'm serious. Do you know what happened to Solomon? Is an example of this. At the beginning of his ministry, he asked God for wisdom. God opened heaven and anointed him with the oil of wisdom. And it was a type of wisdom that early men did not have. Solomon's wisdom caused people from nations to come and sowed into him. His wisdom got Israel to a net worth of over 420 million. Back then, what he had would have been equal to 420 million dollars today. The wisdom that came upon Solomon because he prayed. All of a sudden, this guy start to drop off and start to misbehave. Eventually, he stopped seeking God and started seeking the idols of his wives because he stopped praying. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, when you stop praying, you are doing, you are sinning against yourself. Let me try and wrap up. There are things that you don't have because you never ask God for it. James chapter 4, 2. You have not because you ask not. You're just not going to get some things if you are prayerless. I don't know if you hear me. Hebrews chapter 4, 16. Let us come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace when we need help. James chapter 1, 5. If any man lacks wisdom, let him ask God who gives out to everybody without holding back. When you don't pray, you're causing yourself to have no mercy. You're causing yourself to have no wisdom. You can't obtain grace. You can't obtain mercy. Psalm 50, verse 15. Call upon me in the day of trouble and I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. If you are not praying, you cannot receive deliverance. That's why some of us, when we pray for you, you get delivered. But the demons come back because you have no prayer life to keep them out. When you don't pray, you're, you're sinning against yourself. Let me close this point. Matthew 7, verse 7 to 8. Ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened. For anyone who asks, receives. And he who seeks will find. And he who knocks, the door will be opened. 
it can't happen if you don't ask. Psalm 86 5. For you, O Lord, are good and loving, abounding in steadfast love to all who pray to you. You are doing yourself a great injustice. You will not get what you are supposed to get. You will not fulfill destiny. You will not get that sudden blessing, that divine acceleration, that healing, that ministry, that prophetic gift. You can't get none of it if you're not praying. Stop doing yourself this injustice. Stop sinning against yourself. How can you fight it? Two things. Confess your unbelief. Lord, I'm sorry for not believing your word enough. Because if I didn't believe your word, I would be praying every day. I'm talking serious stuff. How can you fight sitting against yourself by not praying? Just, just pray throughout the day. Every little problem that arises, pray about it. God will deliver you every time. Do yourself the grace of receiving from God by asking. More than 70% you can't get it from God unless you ask for it. Number four, lift your hands as we close. And God is going to fill the atmosphere with oil now as we close. Because this one is a serious one. The fourth consequence which I had to really research and and, and I was like, wow, but I didn't see this. This was so simple. I added this one late last night after I had finished. Because I was like, wow, no, no. How did I miss this? When, number one, when you don't pray, you sin against God. Number two, when you don't pray, you sin against others. Number three, when you don't pray, you sin against yourself. And number four, the fourth comes, when you do not pray, we sin against the kingdom of God. Why? Because we fail to expand the kingdom on the earth. Let me show you what I'm talking about because you don't get it yet. Failing to pray is an indicator to God that you don't need to see his kingdom advanced. You have no concern about God's kingdom. It, uh, it's just about me. Hear this, hear this, and this is going to get thick. Lift your hand and say thank you for this new atmosphere over my life. It's a new season. It's a new day. A fresh anointing is coming your way. It's a season of power. A season of prosperity. It's a new season. And it's coming to me. Coming to you. When you do not pray, you are blocking the advancement of the kingdom of God. Throughout the entire history of the Bible, and church history as well. Spiritual breakthrough occur when God's people pray. They lock up Peter and the church prayed and the jail cell shake open. If the church had not prayed, Peter would have lost his life and we would have missed out on the book of Revelation. God, you from, from the days of Moses on the hillside, God said, lift your hand and pray. And as long as your hand lifted, Israel will win. If your hand go down, Israel will fail. Prayer will advance the kingdom of God. If Moses did not get help, if Moses had stopped praying, Israel would have lost. And we probably wouldn't be here today. In church. Prayer has been a weapon. That God put in the hands of his people. To advance his purpose. That's why he said. When you pray. Pray thy kingdom. Come. Thy will. Be done. Thank you for oil. Listen, listen. When you refuse to pray, you are turning your back 
and what God desires to do in the earth. How do I know? Jesus. Lift your hand. We're closing. Boy. Jesus did miracles. Jesus saved souls. Because he was a man of prayer. The Bible says in Matthew 4, 23. All manner of disease. How could he have done that? If he was not a man of prayer. If he was not prayerful, he could not further the kingdom. His life and his ministry has impacted generations. Because he was prayerful. Jesus was, was able to accomplish his purpose in three years. Because he was a man of prayer. How did he do that? prayer how did he shift a paradigm establish a new paradigm because he was a man of prayer you don't understand when you are prayerful the spirit that comes upon you it is the spirit that will now superimpose wherever you go what you feel in great hope is what is upon my life and the leader's life. By impartation, we all share. Because somebody was in prayer. Last night, God showed me. You literally care something that can shift a nation. I don't know how to shift the nation, God. But I know I am anointed for it. I don't know what the first thing to do. But it is here. And it is prayer that causes it. You can advance God's kingdom because of prayer. And when you don't pray, you are sinning against the kingdom. When a man prays, God invades. I don't know if you're here. John. Woo, John wrote Revelation. John the Apostle wrote Revelation because of prayer. How do I know? Revelation chapter 1 says, I was in the Spirit. You don't get in the Spirit unless you pray. I'm not talking about our religious getting a spirit. We are talk caught up in the realms of glory. And Paul said, Paul said, while I was in the spirit, I heard a voice. And when I looked to where the voice was coming from, I fell on my face. You don't get that without prayer. Listen, because he was a man of prayer, he was able to get the vision of revelation. The book of Revelation came to us because a man prayed. And it has furthered the kingdom greatly. Paul the apostle was caught up in the third heaven. You don't get caught up unless you pray. You're not here. Listen. There is a word in the New Testament that I love. I'm trying to remember the English meaning. But hold on, I'm getting there. But let me read the word. Let, let me read a, a verse where this word is. Remember we're talking about Paul. Who more than one time was caught up in the third heaven. That's, listen, that's all we know. There are, there are three levels. And, and the third heaven is the heaven of God's throne. The highest level up there. The highest host. He's the Lord God of hosts. So we are we just caught up down here. But Paul was in the my God. He said he heard God say things that he never have permission to come tell we. At some serious level of prayer that. Listen. Acts chapter 22, verse 17. Paul said. Now it happened. Say now. now. Lift your hand and say now Lord. now, Lord. 
him say, now it happened when I returned to Jerusalem and I was praying in the temple I became in a trance it is in your Bible the Christian trance the word for that word trance the, 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 it occurs the experience occurs 13 times in the Bible New Testament and old see a meaning different different language listen Hebrew and Greek the word trance the Greek word ecstasy but the literal definition of that word to be taken out of one's mind something drop on you lick you down you don't know where your foot them go you don't know where your hand them go you are rolling and don't know why you are rolling you get caught up in something you don't get a trance unless you're deep in prayer I want the holy trance it don't manifest unless somebody has the grace on them life to release it you're not hearing me these type of things can change nations they can further the kingdom of God there are levels of prayer when you're in a trance you can pray things and it happens immediately sometimes I'm praying and God said be careful now because anything you pray will be answered so be very careful and I know him mean at that point don't pray for money don't pray for power pray for somebody pray for your nation because at that point in time the kingdom is about to be advanced because somebody is deep in prayer in the third level Enoch and Elijah they never even get to die they were just taken because of how close they were church if Moses did not pray on that hillside Israel would have lost the battle. Prayer can advance the kingdom of God. Lift your hand with me. When you are prayerless, you are preventing God from doing great and mighty things in the earth. Stand and lift your hand to Jesus. Right now, Listen, listen to God. God said, you cannot know the next step to take unless I tell you. Leglesh, lesh wakadama, shekhala de sokoto, lesh umase, lechu shekhalata. Fire of God. Fire of God. Begin to talk to him. Some of you are going to get that trance experience. Oil. 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 I, I see you with oil. The oil of joy. Oil of gladness. Oil of healing. I see God setting oil on fire. Let every blockage in your prayer life bow to the name of Jesus. Let every decision that you need to make, may God give you the grace to make it. God is healing. God is delivering. There's somebody that is taking to another level. He's anointing you. Yo, boom, fire of God, 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 receive, 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 oh fire, put your hand on your head, that earning, that yearning rather, 
is going to come out to earnestly pray. I rebuke blockage. I rebuke prayerlessness. I command that devil to let you go. I rebuke pride. I rebuke fear. You spirit of failure, cut you off. Every witchcraft power must bow. Every witchcraft power and every bloodline altar that is claiming people, I break you, I cut you off, I blot you out. Every blood that was shed at that altar, I blot it out by the blood of Jesus Christ. Lift your hand and say, The blood. Say the blood of Jesus. Lift your hands and obey me. Say the blood of Jesus. Come again. Say the blood of Jesus. Wipe down your body now. Wipe down. By the blood of Jesus, Lord. Let everything move from us. Let everything shed. Let everything be cut off. By the blood of Jesus. Every blockage. Oh, you want to be filled? Every blockage. Your feet are on fire. I have anointed you to preach. I have anointed you to speak. Break. I want more, Jesus. Take me closer to you. Nearer to you, Jesus. Fill my life with your presence. Inebriate me. Intoxicate me. Let me be drunk with your spirit. Lord, put me on my face if you desire. Lift your hand to him. For three minutes, he is all that matters. Give him praise and worship him. Give him praise for a little bit of time, but give him praise. God say, thank me for answered prayer before you get it. God say, nothing moves my hand like when you tell me thanks in advance. Pastor Dennis, God has a special anointing to pour on you. Stand right here. He says, your next level, your next level, you have asked me and receive your will. <sighs> you have asked me and receive your will. It is different now. God says, it is different now. It is um, new mercy new mercy Lord give her the breakthrough quickly lift your hand holy God we give you thanks Lord we break the chains of church growth Lord, we ask that you give increase. We ask that you, Lord, give increase. Because your increase, no man can take it away. Let your people be free. Let your people be released from every blockage to prayer and higher levels and the prophetic. God said, church offense need to go 
You can't be offended all the days of your life. The world don't revolve around you. I'm talking to somebody. God said, drop the offense that I can move in your life. Lord, we repent. We are sorry, Jesus. I pray you will have angelic encounters this week. I pray you will encounter God this week. May you have dreams and visions. May you experience the ecstasy of the spirit. The holy presence of God. There it is. Woo! The holy fire of God. May it stay on you rest upon you this week to pull you up As we close, just talk to him individually about your prayerlessness, your lack of altogether prayer or too little bit of prayer, and just ask him to whet up your appetite. Those of you who are already full of prayer, ask him to give you more because you are about to change nations. You are qualified for your next level. We thank you, Lord, as we close today. Lift your hands. Oh, have mercy on us, Lord. Oh, we come before your throne. Oh, we cry holy. Help us, Lord, to be familiar with the supernatural. Oh, we cry holy. Holy are you, Lord. Lift your hands to the King of Kings. I implore you as a member of this church to let your focus be your spiritual growth above everything. I have to give you the gospel that points you to Jesus. I cannot preach these game gospels that are being preached, that are causing churches to overflow because everybody is preaching selfishness and preaching nothing but miracle no holiness no spiritual growth just new just church growth and building and money and prosperity we are missing the mark and we are not growing spiritually churches are big and the people are small small 